You're right, everyone. Welcome back to the Desire Talks podcast, the podcast where we talk to sex workers. Yeah, that's what we do. We talk to sex workers. Um, it is absolutely awesome. To be fair, actually, let me introduce myself first. I am Ethan Bradbury, your host, aka Mr. Britain X. That is my stage name. I was not born with Mr. Britain X. Once I started telling people about Ethan Bradbury, you know, people are like, oh my God, you, you, you're not Mr. Britain X. I'm like, could you imagine that? My birth certificate, you absolute weirdos. <laughs> My mum must have been like really cruel or f- just assumed I was going to be a superhero. But unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I just have amazing skills in the bedroom. Hence why I do like adult content. <laughs> so yeah, today's guest, I need to get onto this. We have Gabriel Phoenix. I keep getting tongue-tied every time I say Gabriel, 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 Gabriel Phoenix. If you don't know who he is, get on Twitter and find him. Yeah, we're both on there, Mr. Britain X and Gabriel Phoenix. I, I don't think you'll be disappointed, to be honest. Yeah, if you if you like looking at the male form, you know, get on there. And then you'll have a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a sample of what he gets up to, then you might be like, yeah, I'm going to go see his proper stuff, you know, the, the the hardcore stuff. Let's ask him some questions, yeah, because for those who don't know, that's what this is about. We interview them, we find out a bit more about sex workers. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready? Let's go. All right, everyone, here we have Gabriel. Gabriel, say hello. Hello, everyone. Obviously, you know Gabriel Phoenix. Yeah, I'm, I've already told him to find you on Twitter and have a little sneak peek, and then you know that's oh, not okay. no, you, <laughs> Yeah, um, just, so just double checking, uh, Gabriel Phoenix, obviously being the name, is that what I'd search in Twitter? Uh yes, X Gabriel Phoenix. So X Gabriel Phoenix. Gabriel Phoenix on there. If you just search Gabriel Phoenix, you'll get me. Perfect, and same for Instagram and stuff. Um, on Instagram, I've actually got a weird one. Uh, I'm called the first firmament, which okay. is like the sky. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we'll do then to make it super, super easy for everyone, we'll grab your socials links and we'll put it in the description somewhere because makes it super easy then, doesn't it? I reckon if you type in Gabriel Phoenix, you'll still find something yeah. about me. On and if, so if you even just Google you, I'm sure you'll come up. Yeah, Google me. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Have you ever Googled yourself? I have, yeah. The people uh, at work actually Googled me. Yeah. And uh, none of it is true. Whatever <laughs> it says, that man, like two billion net worth or something. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I, yeah, I found a website that was like, you, like, Mr. Britain X, Ethan Bradbury, is earning this amount. And I was like, wow, if only. And I, st- <laughs> I started like planning my own imaginary life. <laughs> based on what the internet <laughs> i was going to sell all my assets that i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly all right so let's find out a little bit about yourself so let me clear up first um yeah. because my mouth profanity is none yeah okay it, i'd say no i mean like by you because i i i, I slip and i swear quite a lot oh no like, yeah uh, if, if you want to swear swear all right we're good <laughs> yeah you, you swear quite a lot yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Cockney, so I'm not gonna lie. On the intro, even on the intro, I swore because I said fricking, and I went, "Why am I saying fricking? I'm talking to a sex worker." So let's say fucking. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, there we go. I mean, it's what I do for anything. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, let's talk about what you do then. Um, obviously, I said I interview sex workers. Everyone knows this. Mm-hmm. How long have you been doing it, and what do you do? So I've been in the industry for probably about seven years. Seven. I think. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm an old bud now. <laughs> <laughs> well, leading the um, way, you've probably you've probably inspired a lot of this OnlyFans generation. Um, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, but that's uh, both good and bad, isn't it, for studios? So yeah, I hope I haven't ruined it for the studios. <laughs> mm. So when you started seven years ago, was that when mm. you went straight to studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started with um, UK Naked Men, I believe they were called, yeah. Yeah. So back when we had studios in the UK. They're uh, kind of going obsolete now, are they? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot more laws around uh, what you can and can't do in the UK in terms of uh, sex work. So I don't think it's just easier to... So most companies have moved to Spain or somewhere like that. That makes sense. Yeah, because there's a lot of people I know who fly over to Mexico and Spain and... Yeah, yeah so Lucas Entertainment, I think, Mexico all the yeah. time. We there, yeah. So, oh, so... It's nicer for us. <laughs> perfect. So you're still shooting with Lucas, are you? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I shot with him, I think, last year, and I might be shooting with him again this year, but, you know, fingers crossed. You obviously enjoy it, then, for you to be doing the fingers crossed. Must have had a nice Yeah, time. yeah, yeah, I really like, do you know what it is? Um, you, there's so many actors that you get there, and you kind of become a little community. Okay. Um, you'll all be staying like, at the same hotel, so you'll all be going to lunch and dinners, and because you, you do spend, like, up to a month there at a time, it, you become like a little family, you know. So I'm still in contact in the groups with everyone from the last shoots and the shoots before. And so, yeah, I do so, enjoy that. Okay, talk me round, because I've been asked before about uh, commercial porn. And I'm like, nah, I want to be in control. I want to do it myself. I want to stick to my own platforms. I want to uh, have as much control as possible of where that goes, because we all know leaks happen. Yeah, yeah, when it yeah, comes to Lucas, yeah. I just, not Lucas, sorry. Uh, not saying them specifically, but any type of studio. organization, studio, like that. Mm. I'm like, I'm told what to do, who with, and, you know, so I've always well, kind of had that, that wall. It depends on which studio it is. Obviously, I won't drop any names. Yeah, we're not trying to bad studio. mouth the studio. Well, it's not bad mouth, and it's just the way that they operate, but... Um, some studios will, most studios will sit down and talk with you first, mm. see what positions you're comfortable with, see, you know, what you want to do, what you don't want to do. You always have the choice to say no to uh, scene partners. You know, not everyone is compatible. Um, so there is always that option, you know. Uh, but yeah. yeah, you're not fully in control, but at the same time, you kind of trust that they are there to make you look good. So I like that glossy element, I guess. Yeah. True. But uh, distribution-wise, no, you don't control that. You don't get royalties. Yeah. Um, but you get the publicity that can increase, obviously, your following for OnlyFans and things like that. To be fair, I've actually um, I've known a couple of people who've gone with Lucas and gone on their yeah. trips and stuff, and they said the PR that that's given them. That like the social media is amazing. Like the the rise that you'll get in followers just from being there is fantastic, but it is hard work. Yeah, it okay. Is. So you're saying it's hard work. Most people think like the porn star lifestyle is you go, you have you have sex, and then you just chill. You know, is no, it no, no, it's never like that. It's never it's not it's not like you see, like even on OnlyFans, there's there's an element of you, you wanna do it, you know. Mm. It it's paced, it's at your when you're on set, it's so stop, start, stop, start. You know, you can you, you can be inside someone and someone's like, cut, because they need to put makeup on you or, you know, or say they need to change a light. And so you, you're kind of frozen in these positions. And mm. it's very, um, it's very informal, which I love, you know, like uh, everyone thinks it's just sex, 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 sex. But then you'll have your like 10 minute break and you're all laughing and like, Showing each other yeah. Disney movies and crap, you know. I mean, like <laughs> that's part of that friendship group you're talking about. You're stuck with them for a month. You're filming with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But so, then I think the content looks better for it because yeah. uh obviously you've got that already that comfort while you're on set. So so okay then. What the typical day shooting then? Um mm. when you're out on one of these proper shoots, you know. Um how oh, long would it take? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit different than shooting on your bloody phone, isn't it? <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> no, but saying that, the quality, this is why uh, all the uh, studios are hating now, because the quality of phones are mm. pretty much up to the standards. Um, it depends on the studio. If you're filming for, for instance, Men at Play, there is a lot of B-roll, which means there's a lot of acting around, so it can be a whole day shoot. Yeah. If you're filming for Lucas, there tends to be less acting and they tend to try to shoot about maybe three or four scenes per day. So you'll bang them out in a couple of hours kind of thing. Um, yeah. So it, it literally just depends on the studio and how much uh, B-roll acting they want around it. And, and, you know, 
Okay, cool. Um, so <laughs> you said, uh, for example, you, you could be away for a month as a group of yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. How often would you be shooting? Um, so you tend to go through a period of there'll be 10 days where it's mega shooting. Mm. Um, specifically with Lucas, they do uh, GoPro scenes as well. That's cool. So you can actually do like a proper scene in a day. And then you can do two or three of these uh, GoPro scenes as well. So which you are fully in control of. So there is an element of kind of the OnlyFans aspect there. Mm. Um, but yeah, it just differs from obviously what you're contracted to do or mm. yeah. And it, and it is obviously subject to change depending on variables, you know. So this GoPro scene, what's that then? Uh, so the GoPro scenes are for, oh, I need to get the name right and I really don't want to fuck it up, but it's like raw mal fuckers or something like that. And mm. so it's a bit more fetish and hardcore. Um, it only needs to be about 20 minutes. Yeah. But it's literally whatever you enjoy doing with that scene partner, fetish wise. So they just give you a camera and just say, go record what you want. Yeah, they'll set up four cameras mm. around her. You'll have a bed or whatever you're going to do it on. And uh, yeah, let's just go for it. And then okay. they'll edit around it. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So obviously, that's the studio. Um, you do your own stuff as well. Yes. Um, Let's actually talk about your own stuff. Like, what stuff do you do? Like, you know, in terms of my. Sorry, I lost your audio then. Could you say that again, please? I'm sorry, in terms of like my fan sites or my everyday life? (laughs) Your fan sites. Okay, so um, I was collabing with a lot of people. Um, I went through phases where, you know, I would have. Like porn does, you have seasons. So yeah. you do maybe a month of just continuous shooting and then have your time off editing and things like that. Now my venture, because I am now partnered up with... Nice one. <laughs> I love that colour. For those who can't see the, the visual. Um, oh, got the uh, we both have a padlock. There's no master. Okay. <laughs> Um, but so now the venture is moving forward. It's more going to be about our relationship. We're filming together. Um, it's a, it, so there's an insight into like a kind of fly on the wall perspective. Okay. Um, but we're also making it very uh, topical, comical in a way, um, and gimmicky because we will be. So, for instance, like St. Paddy's Day is coming up. Mm. or uh, so we've had to have a down a guinness competition loser has to be a pup for the day i won obviously (laughs) (laughs) or uh international women's day we took a um uh, inspiration from deadpool Mm. and we filmed with a woman with a strap on just to show the respect that we have for powerful women i actually did a similar thing (laughs) yeah Yeah. did you like it yeah yeah definitely it's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done it a few times. I ain't gonna lie. You know, it's uh, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's brilliant. So you got the St. Paddy's, you've got uh, the International Women's Day. Um, what, got any others that you've already pre pre done or are you coming up? Yeah, we've got Easter. We've got what are you doing for Maybe Easter? Ah, uh, Easter is a little bit of a surprise because it's quite fetish. Okay, okay. Um, but there are eggs involved. <laughs> All right. Um, we've got, I don't know if you're a Star Wars fan, but we've got May the 4th. So Brilliant. we're going to be using a couple of lightsabers on one another, maybe a double sided one, you know. I might pick your brain about that. I'm not going to lie. I was actually a couple of weeks ago looking at getting a lightsaber. Like, a, I want a decent oh, yeah. one. Yeah. I'm not a huge, huge Star Wars fan. You want. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll introduce you to my boy because he's a complete, complete and utter Star Wars fan. I'm Marvel, he's Star Wars. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a big Marvel so we'll fan. Like that for um, releases, uh, popular things that come out, obviously within reason so we don't get sued. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, just trying to keep up with uh, important dates. Yeah. So, uh, which platforms would all this be on? Uh, so, OnlyFans is the main one I use, but I use Just for Fans as well. Um, mm-hmm. I do have a free OnlyFans, which is where uh, we drop exclusive trailers uh gifts and photos every day 
well and we give the option to buy the videos that we do make at obviously a reduced price mm -hmm. um because obviously you can't charge more than you charge for your subscription for the main page there you go um so just in case like people want to see a specific video it will be available to them so your main only fan so not the free one the main is everything on your wall yeah everything's free so there you oh, go yeah. so I, the people I, I don't do i believe that if you've already subscribed you've already paid perfect um, I'm not Amazon Prime. I'm not really. <laughs> I like, you know. <laughs> I love that comparison. I'm not Amazon Prime. I've, I've never thought of that. That's spot on. I'm not. So all of the new releases, all of it, I believe that people have already paid for it if they've subscribed. Um, they've given you that support. So why do they not deserve it? Well, I'm not good. anybody else because it works for them and they make their money. Mm. But it's not the way that I operate, no. Well, so just to clarify to everyone, you're going to go, if you're going to go to the free page, you can buy ex exclusives from the main page, but you might as well yes. just go to the main page because you get everything. You don't just get your one video, yeah. you get loads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like if we sell a video for $6, mm -hmm. for instance, on um, the free page, mm -hmm. you can literally spend three ninety nine more and have a month subscription to the actual page and you'll get that and obviously all the other content that we've made. That's brilliant. That's great. Um, out of interest, because some people do this, do you do like reward content for like people who have, have their renews on and rebels or anything like that? Like loyal fans? Yeah, so I do. Um, I do. Uh, so I do discounted months uh, for obviously people that have been there for a while. Mm -hmm. I'll do shout outs for people who have been fans for a while. Um, and I also offer this doesn't mean that people should, should leave the page but i also offer um discounts for expired people you know so that uh, yes, send out a message to expired and they come back and you know that's that, as i said that's not to say don't follow me just so you can get a discount <laughs> well as you're saying people who already follow you offer discounts anyway who are loyal you know so that's good yeah yeah, yeah. so i do offer to, to to loyal people um and i am more than happy to always do shout outs and things like that you know for people's birthdays i don't charge and not one of them that's cool um, so yeah <laughs> okay so let's talk about the actual porn so you've said you do you've got a this stuff coming up, the the very specific niche stuff for the events, yeah. the times of year things. Yeah. What is your favorite type of porn to make? My, do you know what? This might sound really really soppy, but mm. I like intimate, yeah, uh, intimate, and I like um, I like when people can really see a connection between the whoever's performing. Um, which is why it's great that I'm working with my partner now because it really conveys on the on the camera the actual chemistry, um, and I think that actually goes down really well because they can see mm. enjoyment behind it. You know, not everybody wants this fetish, fetish, just hard fucking. You know, yeah, and it's completely so different. And I remember it was it was a good few years back. I was I think I was flicking through one of the porn sites. I can't remember which one. And there was this really passionate, slow sex. Mm. And I was like, I the, out of a thousand videos that I've seen, <laughs> you know, this is the that first one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I feel the same. One of my best uh, actual scenes that's done the, the, the best, sorry, was very slow and passionate. Mm. And the only reason it was very slow, because it was a studio one, was because I was hungover. <laughs> <laughs> but it was literally at the top of their pole for a very very long time so i was like okay <laughs> that's really good that's really funny that i like that although um, my advice is you can get drunk the night before working for sure <laughs> to be fair i mean i like a good drink i'm not gonna lie yeah, but it depends what you're doing for work the next day. This yeah. that's the same there forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> once it's recorded, I mean that that Ooh. content of you looking like a bag of shit is uh, it's out there, isn't it? So uh, yeah, while we're talking about drink, what's your drink of choice? Oh, really? I am a dirty vodka martini. Okay, very dirty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and I like my olives to have blue cheese in them. 
Okay. <laughs> you wouldn't expect it, would you? No, not at all. Not at all. You'd have think like a, a cider and a park bench, but no. <laughs> I was leading towards like gin or something because everyone's on gin, you know. But uh, do you know what? I like the the ginger and rhubarb mm. gin. Yeah, I've never been a fan of gin to be honest. I find it really cutting. Um, like I'm not a tequila drinker. I'm always no. down Luca, if anything. Or I agree. I prefer my sweet flavors over my bitters. So yeah, yeah. it's not to say uh, that I can't do a pint. No. That's a, <laughs> that's the thing with me. I always start with a pint, and then mm. I move on to spirits. You know, mm. after I have a good few, and then I go pint, gin, and then rum. Okay, yeah, yeah. What kind of rum? Why. You like rum? Which one? Spiced. Spiced, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like a spice rum. Definitely. Yeah. Everyone likes a kraken. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, like, because gin's for the past two years, like, the thing. I think mm. rum, I think it's slowly becoming rum because rum's getting all the flavors now. They're all yeah, popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they've had to branch out, innit? Because obviously the market was being overtaken by everything else having flavour. I think vodka started, didn't they, with all these mixes and flavours and... Yeah, they're starting to pop out a few new ones. I think all of them are actually starting to try and bring out more flavours because of how gin done it. Gin's like... Well, it's about time. Yeah, even Jack Daniels, obviously. Like, uh, now you've got honey and you've got, yeah. Yeah. I think Copperberg is trying to do all the different things now aren't they Papa Burger doing um seltzers which is another drink of choice that i love a hard seltzer yeah they're quite nice only... in fact i have one here <laughs> i'm not drinking it but four <laughs> yeah. percent and it's only oh 27 calories for the whole can perfect and we just need but, to let everyone know he is not sponsored by these. He just likes. No, I'm not booze. sponsored by them. <laughs> I did drink them. <laughs> yeah. yes, I, I'll check them out. Actually, I've only had a couple of seltzers. I've. Um, I think I need to get them a little bit more because I'm trying to get ready for summer. Exactly. I mean, if you if you if you like a night out, but you still want to cut and you still want to keep a shape, obviously. I mean, I've still got my my lockdown chunk, mm. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, then it's good to have that. You don't feel so guilty, you know, as well. All right, so we've kind of, uh, we've, we've tangented onto a good subject, actually. Uh, body image and filming. Mm-hmm. Yes. So how do you feel? Like, Do you ever get to a point where you're like, I'm just not filming, I don't feel comfortable? Or are you just like, no, people like all shapes, are you? Um, it's really difficult because, I mean, when I started, my body was really different and uh, I was really twinky. Yeah. Um, even chubby at one point uh i remember my ex-girlfriend actually pointed out to me she's like i watched one of your videos and you were a bit fat i was like oh thanks <laughs> wow um i'm not in the best but the problem with that is is now i'm trying not to compare myself to other people because that obviously it's just, it's just not mm. gonna work if, if you're gonna do that especially with you know these adonis models that they have but uh, everybody does like a different shape and a different body size. Um, I'm quite comfortable with the way that I am. Um, I'm lucky that I've, I'm hairy. Mm. So there is a, an element of it covers up <laughs> mm. if I'm lacking a bit of muscle. Um, but yeah, I, I am comfortable shooting mostly with, with all. The only time I felt uncomfortable was during, uh, there was a break between lockdowns. Yeah. And I'd grown my hair to about here. Oh, cool. So I had like a proper lion's mane. And um, looking back at the images, I mm. don't like them. So I haven't used them. Oh, but, that's a shame. Uh, oh, I don't mind that they're out there. And like, post whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's just <laughs> a shame it. that you didn't like it. Like, uh, I with the uh, lockdown, I grew my hair a bit as well. And I was I adamant. Love the hair, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you like the hair, do you? But you didn't like the body. I, no, I just didn't like the way it looked on the camera. That was yeah. It. Well, yeah, I mean, I was trying to do it, and then I kind of I look back at the images, and I was like, I look awful. No, it's, it's just that lockdown hair. But then I just need to mm. just remind myself, it was lockdown hair. We we all were in the same situation. It's also hard to upkeep as well. I mean, like yeah. waking up every day and having to do this or that. And, da, 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 da. and I've got really fluffy, fluffy hair. Yeah. So I have to put a relaxer in it. <laughs> to be fair, that, that is a full head of hair. That's 
that's quite impressive actually that head of hair that's like that's never going that's forever this <laughs> that's great like personally i find with doing sex work that i've mm-hmm. got more body confident i'm still not comfortable all the time i still have yeah. my my issues where i might like, i need to lose a bit of weight and stuff but i'm much more comfortable because i know it sounds a bit big headed about something else but I've, I've, got, I've got me, me dick out and when my dick's out I'm like I've got a glorious I dagger. am much more comfortable being naked than yeah. I am so yeah. like I do life drawing classes uh, naked waiting um, all kinds of things like that uh, my ex and I were avid nudists so we mm. would have dinner parties and weekends and things like that and uh, I just find it so comfortable to be naked because it's like an icebreaker. And you know that everybody else that's naked around you is feeling the same kind of insecurities. So I, I completely okay. agree. I, I just feel so much more comfortable and confident naked. Um, the I actually feedback don't... is always nice. <laughs> Sorry? The feedback is always good as well. I'll tell you what, I was on a, a naturist beach. Um, this was a couple of years ago. And uh, we're walking off and this woman is just bouncing like running full pelt down the beach i was like what's going on here runs beelines right for us i know you're talking about feedback mm. she came to compliment us on our dogs your dog's amazing i wasn't expecting it to be a nice penis from across the beach <laughs> I wasn't, but it just reminded me she but just, then would you feel objectified if somebody came up to you and was like nice penis i would have that make you feel? I, I wouldn't be keen i don't like it I, know, yeah, I, I mean, if a bloke walked up to a... I was going to say a bird then, sorry, that's where I'm from. Yeah. If a bloke walked up to a lady and was like, nice tits or nice, you know, so on the flip side, objectification mm. is objectification, you know? Yeah. Now, to be fair, I, I wouldn't ever compliment someone like, like that in general on a new nature speech or nature no. anything. It'd just be just no. like, oh, you're looking great, you know, if you're going to compliment them and you've still got to word yeah. it in the right way. It's, it's all situational, isn't it? It's all down to which environment you're in. It's all down to, I mean, if you're in a sex club. Yeah. Now I'm going to have this like that. Then uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a sex club, then obviously it's okay to compliment the bits and bobs. Mm. But uh, not in an environment where people are just minding their own business and wanting to be naked and, and you know, chill. Yeah. yeah, I mean, with me, I've, like... Sex and naturism don't cross to in for me. No, for me, neither. One is social. Well, I mean, sex is social as well, and you should yeah. have fun doing it. But it's not like whenever, as I said, that we would host dinner parties and things like that. There was never a sexual element to it. Mm. There was never. It never had like a, a a chill out vibe. It would never end in any kind of. It was literally just good chat, good food, you know, and mm. then. It's, it's kind of like an icebreaker, and I think that everybody just liked the fact that they could just be, you know? Yeah, and you don't have to worry about what outfit to wear. <laughs> exactly, just, just the makeup everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's move on to some fan questions. You had quite a lot, mainly through Instagram, which was interesting. Yes. Um, oh, obviously... I thought I would have got more through Twitter, but I think Twitter fans... Um, I'm more interested in the sex and the compliments. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought, because you've got a really big Twitter, you know. Yeah, I've talk- got a decent one, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought you'd have got some decent questions there, but Instagram. So Instagram, how big, how big is your Insta? Uh, my Insta at the moment is, I think, 14,000. So I got four- deleted. I got deleted on 30 or 40,000. Yeah, so 14,000 versus, what, 144K on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so you'd expect, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, but I think it's also easier to interface with if somebody's just flicking through your story and they see the question part, and it's just like boom, they'll throw a question in, you know. Yeah, I, I just think Twitter's now is just like, like <laughs> we said, ask me a question, didn't we? Like on your Twitter, mm-hmm. and you just got thirsty questions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, which is fine because obviously yeah. it's the industry that I'm in. Yeah, but I'm like, you can ask me those questions any day you want, but this is a bit more of a serious, yeah. you know. <laughs> and to be fair, you've you've got some very straight to the point. This is a thing with Insta: very quick one-liner questions, nothing in depth, but mm-hmm. you know, they you know they are interesting. Um, so let's dive in.
Okay, so first one, we're going to dive in. And see, these aren't all sex-related, which I, which I really like. Um, someone is asking, what's your favourite movie of all time? Oh, God, that's a difficult one. I am probably going to go with Cloud Atlas. All right, you're going to hate me now. You hate it, didn't you? I turned it off. Did you? Everybody does this. Everybody does it. It's because it, it's so hard to follow. It's really convoluted, and yeah. everything is going on at different times and different. And it's only I love films like that where at the end it all joins together, where it, it kind of clicks and it explains. Um, well, but was I love, it a yeah. multiverse theory thing? No, it was reincarnation. Reincarnation. That was it. I couldn't remember. Yeah, years so you ago basically, I it. it was about. Um, that kind of belief that you when you're reincarnated you still meet the same people the same souls and that's why they were played by the same actors because it's a soul recognizing a soul kind of thing which i love anyway because i'm very okay. spiritual um so yeah and there, there were some great casts in it like even hugh grant was amazing in it okay i'll give that another go definitely um, i'd say try it yeah. it's not for everyone it might be it's a really difficult book to, to be fair, it's got um, Tom Hanks is in it, doesn't it? Yes, and uh, Halle Berry. Yeah, and Tom Hanks. He's my favorite film for everyone to know is Forrest Gump, and yeah, he was in that. I love so. Forrest Gump. Is he's just a favorite film. Actor. Yeah, definitely. Is that when you got the feathers behind you? <laughs> that would make sense, but honestly, the, it was just there when I moved in, and it's a nice little backdrop. That this this wallpaper for those who can't see, um, it is just feathers all over the wall, black, white, and grey. And it is famous on Instagram. I get some people just like, where did you get that? And I'm just, no clue. <laughs> I really like it. I did. I, at first, because I couldn't see you when we first tuned in, I thought it was just like a screensaver. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> to be fair, I've, I've had some people like proper slag it off, though. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> like, you need... it, don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's a nice feature wall. Um, so, yeah, I'll check out that Cloud Atlas. That's uh that I, I'll definitely give it another shot. Go and read the book because uh, it's every every time period is written in a different style. Okay. To fit that time period, so it can become very yeah. Unless you like to read, I do like reading. Yeah. Read. Yeah. Or, if not, then Stephen King is my go-to read. Oh, me too. Um, what's your favorite Stephen King? The Stand. That's mine. No way! Yeah, I, all time favorite book. Then I love. Um, have you read all of the uh, Dark Tower? No, I've not read Dark Tower at all. So the Dark Tower is a multiverse theory where all of his books connect. Okay, I'll and learn. he writes himself into it as well as the writer of the. Yeah, it's really really interesting. The movie was terrible. Yeah. Yeah, that was, Sorry it seemed quite like a, about, but the movie was terrible. <laughs> it seemed quite like a, a kid's fantasy film, didn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, and the books are very much not like that. Um, it is definitely fantasy, but it's... It's dark. You know, I mean, you've got, like, Pennywise in it, the clown from It. You've got... Oh. They, go in, they go into the stand and pass through. It's all about doorways and... So if you like Stephen King, I would advise it. Did you watch um, Stand, The Stand, they done the I TV did, series. I liked the first half of it. The new one you're on about, um, the old one. I, I The old, old one. Yeah, because I haven't seen the, them both. Yeah, 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 of course, like the Molly Ringwald one. Or whatever I can't was. even remember it. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I remember it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But the um, new I one. I liked the old one. The new one... Um, the first half of the series I really enjoyed, but the problem mm. is they had to rush everything. Yeah. And then the book, everything slower. So I feel like, for instance, without doing any spoilers, for, have you seen the series? Yeah. So Heather Graham's character is mm. very important and, and pivotal in the, in the book. Mm. And they shortened her. So what happened to her never had the same impact it, no. it, it just couldn't because they could not you could not relate to that character or connect with them because there was no time yeah the actual book itself though it's just what i can't remember was it three books that they just brought into one it is it's in three parts yeah yeah yeah, yeah so I, I just had this big exactly. massive book I, I bought it at the airport yeah uh, that's what i've got the big one on my shelf yeah <laughs> but it felt like each part those three books they were just very different like they felt really yeah, different, so different types. you've got the outbreak in the beginning yeah um and then you've got the the civilization the attempt, 
to try and survive and come together and then you've got the building of society in the end mm. and it becomes quite religious in the end with the balance of good and evil yeah as you know <laughs> yeah, so for those listening, uh, we've gone on a massive tangent, but we're recommending... We will fully, 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 fully recommend The Stand. <laughs> yeah, brilliant book. Okay, so um, do you have any plans to visit New York? Um, I, I I mean, I've been once yeah. to Fire Island. I, I, I got stuck in Amateurville for a night. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have plans as of yet. Yeah. Um, I mean, traveling right now as well, and, and it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, so I'm mostly concentrating on work and having the time off. But if, for instance, a studio over there wants me, hi. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, New York studios listening. Then I'm more than happy to 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 come over to New York. <laughs> yeah. Joe, you know what? As a holiday destination, it doesn't really appeal to me. You know. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, I'd, I'd rather like. You know, go. I like history. I like cultural history. Yeah. Um, and as much as there is uh, an industrial history to New York in terms yeah. of the city, I want ruins. I want, you know. <laughs> so, what? Where would you want to go, or if you've already been, your favorite place? Um, I would love to go visit the Nikko temples in Japan. Okay, I didn't expect uh, that at all. I'm into uh, Shintoism as well, and, and I would love to explore a bit more of, of that. Um, What's that, if you could explain? Uh, Shintoism is a religion uh, that mostly derives uh, in balance of nature. Okay. Um, and I don't know if you ever played, like, Zelda. No, I haven't. Have you not? Well, you're missing a trick, because mm. that is Shintoism as a whole, um, about... You know, if you take from nature, you give back. There's always a balance. There's always mm. a, a respect for. They don't have deities, but they have um, natural energies, kind of thing. Like, okay, if you if you want to, pers- they just don't personify it. That's all. That's quite cool. I didn't expect that when you know talking about places to go. <laughs> Quite a nice answer. Oh, what was you thinking? Like Las Palomas? Yeah, I want to go. I, I thought you did <laughs> said somewhere like like Rome, to be honest. Just I didn't like Rome. No. No offense to anybody who is there. I only went for a day, so I didn't get to experience anything. Um mm. but I didn't enjoy the night I was there. Um, so the night was bad and it just kind of got bad blood. No, do you know what it was? This where I was staying, the streets weren't clean. Ah. <laughs> and okay. so that for me put me off. Um, but I haven't seen it. Like I'd love to see the Colosseum, of course. I'd love to see more. Yeah. And, uh, and that from playing like um Assassin's Creed and all of that. <laughs> yeah. So you it sounds like you're quite a gamer. I'm a proper gamer. Yeah, yeah. I'm a geek, like completely. If you ask me anything about Marvel, I will really love to be fair, it. I could talk to you for hours about Marvel then. Um, we're just well, not Phoenix. going. Where do you think Phoenix come from? I've got Dark Phoenix on the wall up here, and <laughs> there you go. well, all right then. I'm going to pick. I'm going to ask you a question that's not on here. Uh, what's your favorite Marvel? I could just right, for the fans because they'll ask this. What's your favorite Marvel film? Oh, that's a difficult one. That is a really difficult one because I like them for different reasons. Yeah. I. Oh, I really, and people are probably going to hate me for this. I really want to say uh, the original X two. Okay, I like that one. Um, and only because there was so much potential for Jean Grey. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I enjoyed that a lot. Um, uh, obviously, I like Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. because, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll probably go with X two. Okay, so if you're a I never thought that. Sorry? I, I, that's strange, because I never thought that would be a pick for me. I Although, watched... um, I like One Division, if, if it's going to be a series. Yeah, if we can pick series. I mean, the, I think the, the new series that are coming out, the ones that Marvel have announced, they, just, they look brilliant. Like uh, House of Harkness and all of this. And yeah, just... The, Moon Knight, is it? And, yeah. They're just going to dominate now, aren't they? They already are. Do you are, know what but... I do want to do? Hmm. Um, the Winter Soldier. You did not Falcon, no, not at all. Okay. So all they did was throw a budget at it without 
a decent story, to be honest. Um, but I did enjoy Hawkeye. Yeah, that was nice. And I love good. how they're setting up the, 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 the new Avengers, like with Yelena mm-hmm. and Kate Bishop. And, and we are digressing, though, aren't but we? We're going to yeah, have massively. a massive conversation off of camera sometime. <laughs> mm. But before, before we do move on, I like mm-hmm. the way that they're bringing back all um, like the Daredevil and all that, Jessica Jones, yes, through that. Yes, yeah, well, because one of the writers is obsessed with Jessica Jones. I think she's brilliant. Uh, An alcoholic. And they wasted, obviously, Rosario Dawson as Night Nurse. Um, mm. And now, obviously, she's Marvel and she's doing a Soka series with Star Wars and possibly a film. Okay. And, uh, yeah, she's got her own series coming out for Star Wars. <laughs> but yeah, back to Jessica Jones. The thing I like about it more, more is like it, she's a vulnerable uh, superhero. She's an alcoholic yeah. who's got like yep. she's been she's abused raw. mentally. She's yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That I enjoyed that about her. I enjoyed. I liked David Tennant as well. I like. I he enjoyed it very him well. That. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I definitely liked her vulnerability. Um, her lack of wanting to trust in the people around her and hmm. yeah so it just showed all that strength doesn't mean anything does it <laughs> exactly all right let's get back to the fans questions because me and you could just keep going all day about marvel <laughs> uh quick one are you a smoker oh oh i don't smoke cigarettes okay, no so, so i am a marijuana smoker i'm yeah. not sure if we're allowed to say that on here but uh, I, right. I, I, that is my advice. I don't do any other drugs um, apart from paracetamol and ibuprofen. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, I do enjoy it. But then I come from a family of smokers. Like my grandmother, before she passed, she she would roll a joint. And did yeah, you ever smoke so... with her? Yeah, of course I did. Oh, that was ace. She taught me how to gamble and everything. We used to play cards. <laughs> yeah, and she used to have a joint. And <laughs> oh, that was so fun. Yeah, I've got to say, I've had in that sense, like uh, the the matriarchy of my family have been amazing. Mm. I'm very, very lucky in that sense. I'll be honest, when it comes to marijuana, but like when I was young, I smoked it mm. like, in my teens. Mm-hmm. I cannot handle it now. Yeah. I can't. It's beyond belief. Yeah, but it's different now as well. It's stronger and they're mixing strains and they're trying yeah. to, it's, it's that chasing the dragon thing. They're trying to make it more potent and more this yeah. and that to the point where it's like, you don't even know what you're getting anymore, you know? No, I had a little smoke. It was, um, it was in the house. I had literally one spliff. And I haven't smoked it in years. I mean, I went mm. to Amsterdam a good few years back and I, I couldn't handle it there either. I had a weekend. I was like, well, in Rome, I'll have a spliff, you know? Yeah, it I, goes, goes. I, I couldn't walk. You know, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. But anyway, I was at home and the dog started play fighting. And you know that scene where uh, Simba and Scar are having that fight at the end and it all slow mo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like that. And I wanted to stop it because it was a, it looked quite rough. They're only play fighting, but I still. Mm. And I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> And that's the point, you know, like, maybe not for me. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, I just couldn't, couldn't handle it. Like, when I was a kid... So what is I, your vice? Hmm? A drink? What is your vice? Have yeah, you know, I'll have a drink on a, on, a, on a weekend, but I don't I don't drink through the week. I don't... You know, no. I yeah, it doesn't bother me. Um, that's it, really. Just have a drink. But yeah. my problem is I can drink quite a lot. I don't get messy, but I can drink so much that it's just toxins to the body and it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. See, my problem as a drinker with you, I'd be spurring you on. I'd be like, yeah, another round, another yeah. shot, another fish, another, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but to be fair, I'm more than happy to arrange a drinking session. That'd be class. We will have a Marvel drink. That's what we'll do. That'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be really good. <laughs> it'd just be, it'd just be a, a, a quiet, chilled night of discussing Marvel and both Marvel. Yeah. And then we won't be able to walk at the end of it. <laughs> okay, so see, we've got these thirsty comments like, I want to eat your ass, how big is your dick, all that sort of stuff. But I don't how big it is, I have to say. Mm-hmm. Some websites say like eight and some say 7.5, but I've not actually measured. So I'm going to go with a 7.25. <laughs> so websites are giving out your penis measurements for you. They've made it up and yeah, 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 yeah. Because obviously they give you like a little bio, and uh, 
there's some where they've like given me a wrong age and I'm like, I've never lied about my age. I'm 32. I was actually about to say that's a question we've had two or three times is how old are you? I'm 32. My birthday is 23rd of July, 1989. It's on my arm. I am a Leo, if you see mm. the lion. 100% Leo. <laughs> You've seen the hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I've never, ever, ever been funny about my age or lying about my age. But um, mm. some websites have have made me younger well as long as they make me look younger, I don't mind but... <laughs> yeah if, if, if they're telling people you're a bit younger and people are believing it happy days well, they wanted me twinky as well so i used to have to like shave and everything and oh, horrible mm, yeah it don't work for me no nah, you suit a beard you suit that that stubbly look i Thank think it's great <laughs> so uh we've got one from by Bitty, and I'm not finishing the rest of the person's name. Mm-hmm. Um, which do you prefer more, to top or to bottom? Personal life or studio? Shall I answer both? Yeah, let's answer both. It's interesting. Okay, so in a studio, or always topping, I prefer. Um, because it's more of an endurance game if you're bottoming in a studio. Or oh, Okay, I get you. Or- yeah, the, it's kind of an element of, well, we don't have that passion between us, so I, I haven't welcomed you in, in a way. <laughs> yeah, you're just, trying to, you're just trying to take um, it. Yeah, in my personal life, I am verse. Um, when I met my partner, he was a top. Mm. Now he's pretty much a bottom. Ah. <laughs> Fair play. Yeah. Good, good on you yeah. for uh, and good on your partner for actually being willing to kind of. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! It's know. just down to what feels good, you know. We we're, we're not, you know. I mean, yeah. he's very open. We I'll put him in a pair of lingerie and fire hires. I don't mind. But... <laughs> All right, fair play, fair play to him, you know. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, controversy. Ooh. Oh, no. Here we go. It's not. It, it might not be controversy to you, but I think to some people it is. What's your thoughts on gay for pay porn actors? Oh, I love it. I yeah. have no problem with that, and I'll always defend them. Um, and what I always say is we're playing a role and we're playing a... It's a job. Meryl Streep was not Prime Minister. Mm. So, you know, it's acting. So I, it's the worst of all. I love that I do answer. Under- well, you like Keep going. it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. I do understand that a lot of the issue with it comes from um, people from places where they have to fight for their sexuality, so they do feel threatened by it. Um, but the whole world isn't like that. So we are in a day and age where I think that sexuality is situational. Mm-hmm. I will never say that in one way or another. I want to be with a man. That's what I know. But you can never say that you. Mm-hmm you might not be in a situation where you'll get turned on by the, you know, a different gender or a different role or a different, so. Well, you literally just said both you and your partner was shagged by a woman with a strap on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. And we both loved it. We both loved it. Yeah. Um, now, the reason I like that answer is I've had a discussion uh, on here a couple of times, actually, similar question. And I kind of came to the point of, with gay for pay, you're still fulfilling, like, a necessity, a need. Um, they want to see a man doing gay stuff. You're We're providing you're, a product. Yeah, providing the service, uh, mm-hmm. provide the product. Um, so I was like, it's, I don't see an issue with it. I do see the issue with gay baiting. That's different. Yes. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. Very, very but different. Pass that as completely different. You know, I mean, like I was just out working uh, with Paddy O'Brien. And mm. staying with him last week. And uh, obviously he has his girlfriend who is gorgeous and lovely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I see no problem with that. And obviously we work together really well. Um, I, re- I actually really like people who are gay for pay because they're comfortable with their sexuality. Yeah. And that's something that I adore if you're that like uh, Like, uh, like he kept saying to me last week, a Paddy quote was... Um, you're not a real man unless you can fuck a man. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's that, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. That's... In terms of comfort level, do you know what I mean? So, Have you filmed with many gay for pay people? Um, probably, I won't even know. 
<laughs> yeah, to be fair. Because <laughs> you know. uh, even Lucas, I think, has hired some straight guys. I did the quote marks. Hey, oh, no, I, yeah, I definitely have. Um, I think, I can't remember his name, Dylan James, I think, was gay for pay as well. I'm and not I, sure. I, I think him and Tattoos, lovely, lovely guy. But as I said, the gay for pays are the loveliest. <laughs> yeah. Sound. And I think you, you know that you're not going to get drama because they're just going to go, right, see ya, done my job, bye. <laughs> this is what I love as well because it's just a professional thing. So you know they're in it for, you know, we're there to get the job done, we're there to get the content. When it's done, there is no, you know, and it makes your partners feel comfortable if you both have partners because you know it's just completely professionalism. Do you find that the gay for pay ones they 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 might be a bit too rough when it comes to the actual sex or they don't understand the other male body as much or do you find they're fine um it I, it depends how long they've been in the industry for a start yeah that's true you know it depends how um i find a lot of uh, gay actors are too rough to be honest yeah. because they think that's what people want to see um but i found that working with Probably uh, the gay for pay actors that I've worked with have been the most supportive and they've been the most like, oh, do you need to stop? Are you in pain? Like, you need a break? They're, they're very, very much like, and I think that's because they've bottomed and it's not okay. their enjoyment. So they kind of understand, I think, a bit more. Mm. The ones well, I've worked with personally, I can't say for everyone. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've just seen a question from Dan. Um, that's actually a really nice question. Um, no one's asked this before on the podcast. Explain beauty in your words. Oh, that's difficult. Mm. Difficult. Um, it's a thinker. Oh, um, I think beauty is a something that appeals to you. B something that you can relate to and see something that is honest that's my idea of beauty there you go there you have it dan yeah, was that all right yeah that's great <laughs> um this isn't really much of a question it's just a, a sentence i love you both paddy and you i'm assuming paddy your other half no paddy o'brien that would have been oh yeah, yeah yeah my so, other half is called jazz Jesse oh, okay. James or JJ. There was so, a question in there about Jesse. Yeah, go on. Uh, if you can remember it, I don't know. It was, what is your, the thing you like most about Jesse? Oh, here it is. Just found it, yeah. From, yep. yeah, Xander. Xander asked it. So for you, Xander, I will say his honesty. Yeah. His sincerity. He's always himself and he will always, 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 even if it's uncomfortable, tell me the truth so that's it <laughs> just like, rain it in you're being a prick yeah 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 yeah, yeah. all the time trust me i get out all the time <laughs> okay that, that that yeah it's perfect that, that's nice it's it's that's the best thing in a relationship i think is just open and honest relationships you've got to be especially in this industry because uh, yeah. it's not the same parameters as what people class as a uh, standard relationship or I was actually about to say, um, obviously, you, you're just saying about collabing now is just with each other. Are you completely, <laughs> you had Paddy, you filmed recently. Yes. So are you now staying close between you and your partner or is it certain uh, people? So we, we may do, as I said, because it could be quite gimmicky or so we'll have cameos involved. Um, yeah. We are still working out the parameters of this. Like any um, relationship? like any relationship you would we don't want to be open that's not for me that, mm -hmm. that's not fair um but we do have a lot of friends in the industry that we feel quite comfortable with uh so they could be appearing in in certain roles like that yeah. um yeah but pretty much it, it will just be us going forward um paddy was a shoot that i'd organized a long time before and uh I mean, in terms of, he's a legend, you know, I mean, probably the most famous gay UK porn star. Mm. So I was like, you know, we'd already arranged, so I've done it. And my boyfriend was very, very supportive of me. 
but uh, go, uh, going forward after getting, because I have a lot of backdated content with other people, after mm-hmm. that, it will just be Jazz and I and Solos. Cool. Yeah. Uh, well, like people ask me, um, so, like, are you in an open relationship? I go, half open. It's mm. like, it's not actually open. I wouldn't, if, I, I wouldn't go out on the pole. It's, no. it's what's comfortable between my, me and my partner and always for work. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. you were saying that's your circumstance, and so many people who would be half open is different. And yeah, yeah, every relationship's different. But again, that comes down to the honesty and the openness, as you say. So, because you're being yeah. open and honest with your partner, then you, you know the parameters, what's okay and what's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, final question um, from a fan, then we'll, I'll ask you one more myself. Is hey. how do you see yourself in 10 years? In a mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get up the stairs, I think. Um, no. I, I th- it's a very difficult one because I, I don't think I would like to... Oh, let, how can I put this um, tactfully? Um, I don't want to be mm-hmm. somebody who holds on to a porn career in terms of trying to chase my youth. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to see myself settled down in probably hopefully somewhere sunny um, and if I'm still doing content then fair enough that's fair but probably just like owning a gym or a bar or something very comfortable mm-hmm. where that's where I see myself and probably lots of uh, filler <laughs> <laughs> fair enough I mean that's that's brilliant I mean I yeah just happy in 10 years just somewhere where you're relaxed you and your partner maybe this is what i want to work hard for the 10 years to earn being relaxed yeah this it sounds lovely um we're not gonna go like too much into the nitty gritty numbers and stuff like that um but i just want you to give a piece of advice to anyone thinking about getting into the the sex work industry Mm -hmm. Um, it depends Anything. which side they're going into. Okay, so with any go. any kind of sex work, you need to ensure that you um, not integrity, but you need a, a steadfast mind. You, you you need it's not something to do if you um, what's the word? If you're not in a good headspace, then it can be very triggering. Um, there are a lot of pulls in different directions that can lead you down bad paths. So I'd always say it's something you really need to think through. If you can, then discuss it with the people around you because uh, doing it alone and unsupported is is very, very difficult. I was lucky that I had the support of my family. Um, But yeah, I do find it very liberating. And as you said, you've even found... uh, made you feel physically more attractive um and to be in control but most of all stand your ground and do not let anybody tell you to do anything that you don't want to do because you have all control to say no that is my advice (laughs) perfect that's yeah that's brilliant advice thank you for that um okay so is there anything that you would just like to say in general to anyone a shout to anyone even if even fans and or followers oh man there's too many um obviously it's got to be be generic it could just be a big overall it will be a very generic thank you to everybody of course for your continued support or your new support if you're going to support me now um I'm going to have to give a shout out to my boyfriend, Jesse James, because uh, of the support that he's given me. Um, Obviously, a shout out to you for inviting me along on your podcast. I feel very honoured. And I think that's about, and obviously, studios for employing me. Thanks for the paycheck. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. All right, well, it's been lovely having you on um and yeah i found out quite a lot about you and i found out we've got uh, quite a lot in common like yeah we do actually so yeah i think we'll uh be back and forth in quite a bit over that um you definitely hit me up for that marvel drink i'm telling you i'm well for that well 
Definitely. <laughs> all right then. So just going to say goodbye to everyone. Um, we'll see you all soon on Design Talks podcast. All right, bye everyone. Much love.